Good morning. Buenos dias por la segunda vez. Let's open up. We're finishing Jonah. Hoy vamos a terminar nuestro estudio. Hemos pasado cuatro o cinco, cuatro semanas en el libro de Jonás. We've been a few weeks on Jonas. And today we are Jonah and we're finishing it up. Now, last week, la semana pasada, we left it in Jonah 3, uh, verse 9. And remember, si se acuerdan, Jonah came and told the people, you guys are going to be destroyed. Va, Dios va a destruir la ciudad. And they felt so bad and they turned away from their sins and they begged God, maybe God will have compasión con nosotros. And that's where we left them. Y ahí dejamos la historia. Today we're going to start. We're going to start, vamos a empezar hoy con capítulo 3, chapter 3, verse 10. And this is what happened. When God saw their deeds, that they turned from their wicked way, y vio Dios sus acciones que se habían apartado su mal camino, then God relented concerning the calamity which he had declared he would bring upon them. Dios del mal que había dicho que les haría, ya no lo hizo. So God saw the heart of the people. Dios vio el corazón de la, la gente de Nineveh. Y decidió Dios, that's it. You know what? I love you. You repented. You were in your sin, but you turned away. Regresaste conmigo, and I forgive you. Now, if this was a Hollywood movie. Si esto hubiera sido una película. If Brad Pitt was playing the part of Jonah, right? It would have been a great story because it would have had action with the fish. And it would have had action con las olas y las tormentas. And this would have been a great way. Este, en este versículo, hubiera sido una gran, grande manera que podíamos terminar la historia de Jonas. This would have been a great way to finish the story of Jonah. This is chapter 4. Because Jonah was a real person. Porque Jonas una persona real. And just like us, sometimes, even after we get our second chance, aunque recibimos dos oportunidades o tres, there's a chapter four in our life. And if this was a movie, if this was a película, that's it, the credits would be rolling. Everybody would ask, man, that's a good movie. But it's not. We're going to read what happens in chapter four. Vamos a hablar de lo que pasó en capítulo. Cuatro. Jonah got mad. Se enojó con us. Chapter 4. Let's read verses 1 through 3. But it greatly displeased Jonah and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, Ay, Señor, ¿no era esto lo que yo decía cuando aún estaba en mi tierra? When I was in my land, therefore, in order to foretell to foretell this, I fled to Tarshish. For I knew that you are a gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger, and abundant loving kindness, and one who relents concerning calamity. So Jonah, Jonas, se enojó. God sent Jonah to give this message. Mandó Dios a Jonas a dar este mensaje. And he got mad when the people came to God and God forgave them. Now, the reason Jonah got mad, la razón que se enojó Jonas, there's a lot of reasons. Well, number one, because the Israelites and the Ninevites, they didn't get along. No se, la gente de Israel, la gente de Nineveh, no se querían. They were sworn enemies. They hated each other. Se odiaban. So when God told Jonah, entonces cuando le dijo Jonás, ve a decirle que voy a destruir la ciudad, that was a message that Jonah loved. Because that was like, you remember when you were a kid, that first when was a niño, and your brother or sister would get in trouble, and you would wait for them to come home, and you'd be like, ooh, mom's looking for you. You're going to get it. Because that was kind of like, not that I mean. Right? That's what Jonah was thinking. He was like, this is great. I don't like the Ninevites. No me gusta esta gente. And I get to tell them that they're going to be destroyed. Se no bon. Because Jonah got mad because it wasn't fair. Porque no era justo. Because you know how sometimes we act the same way que nosotros actuamos la misma manera. We see our friends who are not living a life following God. Vemos a nuestros amigos que están viviendo una vida fuera de lo que Dios quiere. And we see that they're hustling, that they're doing their thing, and maybe they got a little bit more money, and maybe they got a nicer house, and maybe it doesn't look like it didn't have tantos problemas en su vida. But in the back of our heads, we're like, it's okay. I'm going to heaven, you're not, so, so it's okay, right? See, that's what Jonah was thinking. He thought, you know what, as bad as they are, that's okay, because I'm on the right team. Porque yo soy en el equipo correcto. 
So when God's love, when the amor de Dios vino, y les dio uh, misericordia a la gente de Nineveh, when they had mercy on the people of Nineveh, Jonah couldn't stand it. No podía con eso. And he got mad. And he got so mad, this in versículo 4, it says in chapter, in verse 4, uh, verse 3, he says, Therefore now, Lord, please take my life for me, for death is better to me than life. Y ahora, Señor, te ruego que me quites la vida, porque mejor me es la muerte que la vida. Jonah was so mad, so tan enojado. He was so upset about what was happening that he told God, little drama queen about Jonah, he told God, just kill me. It's not worth it. I can't believe that you love these people. Con más tanto se enojó que le pidió Dios que le quite la vida. See, we like when things are fair. Nosotros nos gusta cuando son las cosas justas, especially when it benefits us. Especialmente cuando nosotros somos los que benefician cuando son las cosas justas. But the thing is that God is not fair. Dios no es justo. Nowhere in the Bible does it say that God is fair. Ninguna manera, lugar en la Biblia dice que Dios es justo. And let me tell you, it is a good thing. Es una cosa muy buena que Dios nos gustó. Because if we got what we deserve, we'd be pretty bad. We'd be pretty messed up. Jump really quickly. I'm going to read that rapidly. Romans 9, 14, 16. I'm going to read that at Romanos 9, 14, 16. Paul's writing to the Romans. He gave these in. Just as it is written, what shall we say? There is no injustice with God, is there? May it never be. Porque él dice a Moisés, tendré misericordia de lo que yo tengo misericordia. And I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. So then it does not depend on the man who wills or the man who runs, but on God who has mercy. God has mercy on the people he wants to have mercy on. It's God's game. It's his rules. Vamos a hacer lo que Dios quiere porque Dios es el que está con las reglas. And Jonah had a hard time with it. So God asks Jonah, entonces Dios le pregunta a Jonás, do you have good reason to be angry? De veras estás enojado, le pregunta a Dios. See, the thing is, is that, you know, what happened with Jonah, lo que pasó con Jonás, que se empezó, he started to compare himself with other people. Empezó a ver como su vida era con otras personas. And instead of focusing, you know, él hubiera estado enfocando en lo que Dios le dio a él, en la misericordia que Dios le dio a él. And instead of focusing on what God gave him, he focused on what God was giving other people. Se enfocó en lo que Dios le estaba dando a otras personas. If you ever taking your kids to get ice cream, we love going to Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A has the best ice cream, I'm telling you. You should guys check it out. Chick-fil-A, good ice cream, right? And here's the thing. When the kids, I have four kids, when they get the ice cream, what do kids do when you pass out ice cream? ¿Qué pasa cuando niños le dan nieve a los niños? There's always one who looks at it and looks at the size of the vanilla cone, and this one's a little bit bigger. And what do they say? They got a vanilla cone in their hand, but they look at their sister saying, well, how come she got more? ¿Por qué ganó más? Instead of focusing, no enfocándose que I have some ice cream, they are focusing, se están enfocando lo que otras personas tienen. There's a really good story in the Bible, and I told him we went on the Bible, open up your Bibles to Matthew 20, Matthew 20, 1, 16. And we're not going to read it all, but basically it talks about, habla sobre, um, los trabajadores en, en, el viña, en la viña. And basically the story goes this, is that the guy goes out and he gets some work, que sale el Señor y agarra trabajadores. And these guys come in and they're looking for work. You can read it all in chapter 20. You get in and they said, listen, Armando, I'm going to hire you to do that trabajo para que vengas and I want you to come work here. And I want you to do the work and this is how much I'm going to pay you. And then later on the story goes that he went out maybe at 12 o'clock and he brought more people and said, hey, I'm looking for people to come work. Estoy buscando personas que vengan a trabajar. And this is how much I'm going to pay you. And then even later, towards the end of the day, the guy goes out. El, 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 el boss sale a a otros trabajadores y le dice, ¿sabes qué? Vente a trabajar, come work, and this is what I'm going to pay you. So at the end of the day, cuando, cuando termina el día, they all line up. Se ponen toda la línea. The guys that were there from 8 o'clock, the guys that started at 11, and the guys that started later on in the day, los otros personas que pasaron después en el día, and they start giving them money, right? And this is the Bible, they start to pass out the money. And then these guys are looking and they realize 
se enojan estas personas porque ven que las personas que empezaron y que trabajaban dos, tres horas, the people that work two, three hours, are getting paid the same thing I'm getting paid. And these guys are like, man, that's not fair. No es justo eso, porque es justo que yo me vine a trabajar y me están pagando lo mismo que esa persona que trabajó dos horas. And look what he says, mira lo que dice el versículo, um, en capítulo 20, versículo 16. But he answered and said to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for a denarius? Take what is yours and go. But I wish to give to this last man the same as to you. No me felicito hacer lo que quiero con lo que es mío. O es tu ojo malo porque yo soy bueno. Ahí las últimas serán primeros y los primeros últimos. We get in trouble. Nosotros nos metemos en problemas. When we base our faith, cuando nosotros basamos nuestra fe en Dios on what other people are getting. En lo que otras personas están recibiendo. We need to focus on what God is doing for us. Necesitamos enfocarnos en lo que Dios está haciendo para nosotros. You don't know what's going on in that guy's life. You don't know what's happening with him. Don't base what God is doing for you on what God's doing for the other person. You don't know. Tú no sabes. See, in Jonah, he didn't get it. Jonah no entendía. No entendía que la, el mismo amor, that the same love that saved Jonah from the ship, that saved Jonah from the waves, that saved Jonah from the fish, that gave him a second chance, is the same love that God had for the Ninevites. And if you look at the story, si ves la historia, las personas de Nineveh, it just took them one time to come to God. Nomás se tardaron una vez para llegar a Dios. But Jonah, in the whole book, he keeps running away from God. See, Jonah, in his head, in su, in su mente, entendía lo que era el amor de Dios, pero él no aceptaba que el amor de Dios era para todos. He didn't accept that the love of God was for everybody. Let's see what happens real quick. It's pretty funny what happens. Vamos a leer versículo 4. Then the Lord said, Do you have good reason to be angry? Then Jonah went out from the city and sat east of it. Then he made a shelter for himself and sat under it in the shade until he could see what would happen in the city. He said, Señor Dios, dispuso una una planta, and he grew up over Jonah to be a shade and over his head to deliver him from his discomfort. And Jonah was extremely happy about the plant. So Jonah was so mad that he went out and he made a little tent. He hizo un lugar para sentarse ahí en la sombrita. And he sat there and he's just watching the city. No tenía nada que hacer. He's watching the city, hope it gets destroyed. Jonah's a little hater. <laughs> he's just sitting there watching the people, hoping that something happens. So God says, listen, Jonah, I'm going to teach you a little lesson. Te voy a enseñar algo con us. Dice la Biblia, the Bible says that night he had a plant come up. And that plant at the next day was a big old beautiful plant. And this beautiful plant was giving him sombra. Le estaba dando sombra a Jonas. And Jonah was happy. You know what, little guy, all he cared about was the shade. So he's sitting there, he's like, man, I'm happy. I got my shade. Everything is going good with life. But then God, he said, versículo, but God appointed a worm when dawn came the next day and it attacked the plant and it withered. And when the sun came up, God appointed a scorching east wind and the sun beat down on Jonah's head so that he became faint and begged with all his soul to die, saying, Death is better than my life. So once again, otra vez, Jonas está quejando. God takes his worm and the plant dies because God está enseñando algo. Algo que no aprendió, something that Jonah should have learned dealing with the people, should have learned inside the fish, should have learned running away from God. But no, he doesn't understand, so God's like, all right, I'm going to give you a little object lesson. Se murió la planta. The plant died. And now again, the sun's beating down on Jonah's head. Está sentado afuera. Está enojado porque no destruyeron la ciudad. He's mad because they didn't destroy the city. And now his one plant, la cosa que le está trayendo, gozo se muere. And he does it again. Lord, oh my, just kill me, God. Forget it. It's not worth it. I'm, I'm such a horrible person. It's que tanto que sufro yo, pobrecito Dios. Quiero que me quites la vida. Then God said to Jonah, Lord, Dios le dijo a Jonás, Do you have good reason to be angry about the plant? And he said, I have good reason to be angry, even to death. Y le dijo al Señor, Tú te bailaste de la planta, the plant for which you don't work, and which you did not cause to grow, which came up overnight and perished overnight. God tells Jonah, says, Listen, 
You didn't create this plant. Tú no hiciste, tú no creíste esta planta. Tú no, le, tú no la cuidaste, tú no le, le hiciste agua. You didn't feed it, you didn't take care of it. And you're going to get mad about this plant? ¿Te vas a enojar por esta planta? If you care so much about a plant, how much do you think I care for the people of Nineveh? El libro de Jonás, the book of Jonah, as we get into it and as, and as we look at the book, and now as we're finishing up, ya que estamos acabando, the book of Jonah, el libro de Jonás, isn't about the Ninevites. No sobre la ciudad. The book of Jonah isn't, isn't even about Jonah so much. What the book of Jonah is about, lo que es el libro de Jonás, is that God loves you and God is pursuing you. Que Dios te ama y que Dios te está persiguiendo. Because God had every right, Dios tenía toda la razón para dejar que Jonás se muere. God had every right for Jonah to die. The way he was acting, como estaba cuando su actitud, he thought he was all that. Jonah thought he was on the right team, but he kept running away from God. The book of Jonah, el libro de Jonás, es como Dios nos ama. And it wasn't even about the Ninevites, because 150 years later, 150 años después de este libro, we read how the city was destroyed because it became all messed up again. So it's not about the Ninevites. <laughs> what we need to realize, what nosotros tenemos que aprender de este libro, es que Dios te ama. And we can plug ourselves, nosotros nos podemos meter en el lugar de Jonás. And if we're honest y somos honestos con nosotros, we can see how many times God has provided us the way and the right way to do things, but we have turned our back. And we think, you know, nosotros pensamos, because we're joined and we come to church and we do the good things, that it puts us in a better place than everybody else, than that one guy in the corner. But the truth is, is that every time you pull it out of the Dios, you're doing it just like everybody else is. Really quickly, if you jump back, to see this, rapidamente lo que dijo en versículo 2. To finish up, if you look at what God, what Jonah says in verse 2. Jonah says, I fled to Tarshish, for I, I knew that you were gracious and compassionate to God, slow to anger and abundant to loving kindness to one who relents concerning calamity. Empieza a decir con las Dios clemente que es un compasivo lento para la ira y rico en misericordia y que te arrepientes del mal con que amenazas. See, these words, and it's really important that you pay attention on this one, porque las palabras lo que está diciendo Jonás, what Jonah is saying in these words, he's not just making them up. No solamente las está creando esas palabras. These if you look in Exodus, I think it's Exodus 26, you see that when God gives Moses the new tablets, cuando, uh, cuando Dios le da a Moses los segundos uh, diez mandamientos, God says these 13 attributes of God. Dios dice los, las 13 cosas que son Dios. So Jonah, what he is doing, lo que está haciendo con Naz, es que está repitiendo lo que él aprendió desde niño, que Dios es amor, que Dios tiene misericordia, that God is love, that God is uh, mercy. That he's abundant. So Jonah is repeating this. See, Jonah knew it with his head. Jonas lo conocía con su mente. But he didn't accept it with his heart. No lo aceptaba con su corazón. That God loves everybody. Que Dios ama a todos. Amen. And you know what happens and how we do that? If you grew up in church, check this out. Si tú creíste, si tú estabas en la iglesia por cualquier tiempo, you probably have John 3.16 memorized. Es probablemente que tienes a Juan 3.16 memorizado. And you can say it because you were a little kid and you would say it in church and you have it memorized. And when we say the words that for God so love the world, cuando decimos las palabras que Dios, por tal manera Dios amó el mundo, Sometimes we don't remember that even though we have it memorizado en nuestra mente, that God loves everybody. There is no us and them, no hay nosotros y esas personas. It is just God and us. Solamente es Dios y nosotros. The story of Jonah, la historia de Jonás, es una persona que Dios amó, a person that God loved so much that he would not let go of him. Que lo amaba tanto que no quería soltar a Jonás. And God loves you so much, que Dios te ama tanto, that he does not want to let go of you. As much as you push him away, tanto que usted lo empuja y quiere quitarse de la mano de Dios, Dios no te va a soltar. God is not going to let you go. Because God loves you. And God is going to give you the chances to come back to him. As Israel comes up, mientras que Israel pasa a hacer la música, 
it is important, it's muy importante que nosotros entendemos el amor de Dios, that we understand the love of God, that we understand that if you're here today, que si tú estás aquí hoy, no es a coincidence, it's not an accident that you are here, it is here because God knew that you were going to be here, y es porque quería que tú oigas, and he wanted you to hear that God loves you. And God's not going to give up on you. Y Dios no te va a dejar. And you may try to push him away. Quisieras a mejor empujarlo. And maybe your whole life you've pushed him away. A mejor todo tu vida lo has empujado. Pero Dios no te va a dejar. God is not going to leave you. Quit fighting it. Deja de pelearlo. Si tú sabes que Dios te ama. Y si tú sabes que la vida que Él tiene para ti. Es lo que tú es mejor para tu vida. ¿Por qué vas a pelear contra eso? As we go ahead and do the music, mientras que hacemos la música, we're going to go ahead and pray. We're finishing up the libro de Jonás. Estamos terminando el estudio de Jonás. The Ninevites repented and came to God. Jonah took him a little bit longer. Jonás se tardó un poquito más, pero vino a Dios. You don't have to wait. Tú no tienes que esperarte hasta que estés al fin. You don't have to wait to the end of the movie. If God is chasing you and you've tried to get out of what he wants for your life, but for whatever reason, for cualquier razón, you still feel God in your life, and you look at how dirty your life is, y ves, que tan malvado es tu vida, and in spite of all that, God still loves you, quit running, deja de correr. Dear Heavenly Father God, gracias Señor por este día, Señor, y gracias porque tú eres un Dios de misericordia. Porque eres un Dios de amor, because you're a God of mercy, because you're a God of love. Lord, we, if we are honest, y somos honesto, man, we are just like Jonah. And maybe you're never going to call us to go to another country, a mejor nunca nos vas a llamar para otro país. But if we are honest, we know that there are times in our life, que a veces en nuestra vida, that you call on us, and we know what you want us to do. Y sabemos que tan grande es tu paz cuando estamos contigo, but we still run away. And we make promises to you, God, y te hacemos promesas, and we promise our friends and our family that we're going to change, but we still come back to it, Lord. Lord, let us understand, déjanos aprender, déjanos conocer, que nosotros no podemos, that by ourselves we cannot do it, Lord, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, por el poder de Jesucristo, you give us the power to turn away. Tú nos das con el poder de Jesucristo, el poder para dar la espalda a nuestro pecado y venir a ti, Señor. Lord, I ask that you give us boldness, que nos des fuerza, Señor, to step away from the sin that we need to step away from, to turn to you para dar la cara a ti, Señor, y regresar a ti, Señor. And maybe it, it needs to be a decision, y a mejor tiene que ser una decisión que nosotros hacemos. Maybe it's something that we need to pray with somebody, a mejor es algo que tenemos que orar con alguien. Maybe it's just time for us to get baptized because we know, sabemos lo que es lo que tú quieres para nuestra vida, Señor. But Lord, give us the strength, danos la fuerza, danos the boldness, Lord, that today can be the day that we stop running that we stop trying to wriggle out of your hands, Lord, and we know that we are not going to push you away. Que no te podamos empujar, Señor. Que no te podamos dar la espalda, Señor, porque tú nunca nos vas a dejar. Lord, thank you for Jesus. Gracias por Jesucristo. Thank you for your grace. Gracias por tu misericordia y tu gracia, Señor. And in whatever decision y cualquier decisión nosotros tenemos que hacer, Whatever decision we need to make right now, Lord God, let today be the day that we stop running. Deja que hoy sea el día que dejamos de huir, Señor. En el nombre de Cristo Jesús. Amen.